following my recent video, a config guide for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant for the Phoenix A320. A number of subscribers have reported performance being less than optimal. Well, I don't have a magic bullet that's going to solve all of the potential issues. But I do have some tips and suggestions that may help you to fully enjoy this amazing aircraft. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. Phoenix have supplied a wide and varied selection of liveries for the Airbus. And I'm sure by now you've downloaded some of your favourites. But have you noticed something? They're all, by default, 8K textures. By 8K I mean they're very high resolution. And depending on what sort of monitor you've got, and also applicable to VR users, are you really getting any benefit from such a high resolution? The higher the resolution, the harder the computer's got to work. If you click on the filter next to the search bar, you can search for liveries by a number of parameters. And one of the parameters is texture resolution. Change it to 4K. Chances are you won't even notice the difference. And if you're in VR, you definitely won't notice the difference. Changing the texture resolution won't make a massive difference, but it will make a difference. From the menu option, I've selected my liveries. And as you can see, most of them are 4K. But I do have a number of 8K textures as well. Look at this comparison. Air Canada 4K is 65 megabyte, but the 8K is 257 megabyte. On the bottom left, go to Settings, and here you can change the default livery resolution that's displayed. I've changed my default to 4K, because 9 times out of 10, that's what I'll choose. This change won't make a 10 FPS change, but particularly for those on mid-level graphic cards, it can have quite an impact. When you select the Phoenix Airbus, within the sim a small application opens on your desktop. This will likely run minimized as a hidden icon in your taskbar. It's the Phoenix logo, click on that, and the external application opens. And here are a number of settings that are of interest to us. Note under display quality, we have three options, quality, balanced and performance. There's also three options on the render display. CPU, which is recommended, GPU auto select, which is for an integrated graphics card, and the third option, which is a dedicated graphics card, which in my case is the RTX 3090. Default is CPU, the default display setting is quality. Let's change that to balanced. This can be done live. Simply hit apply. You do need to wait a while and let things settle down. I would recommend 15 to 20 seconds. External view is a small improvement from about an average of 48 to about 52. Now switch to the cockpit view, getting about 44, 45. Let's change the display quality again, this time to performance and hit apply. And again, just let things settle down for a moment or two. FPS has improved from about 45 to 50. Can't see much difference. Quality wise, gauge is still readable. External views will normally be a higher FPS. There's a reasonably fair stress test. I'm flying over London. Live weather at 3000 feet. Lots of cloud about. And my volumetric clouds are set on ultra. Back in the cockpit, let's change the display quality back to quality and see what happens to our frame rate. We are 47, 48 or thereabouts. Click apply, just give it a little while to settle down and FPS has dropped to 38. That's about 9 FPS. Now let's experiment with the render displays. I'm going to change from the recommended CPU to my dedicated graphics card, the RTX 3090, leaving the display on quality. Hit apply and let's see what happens. Change is not dramatic, 3 to 4 FPS in the cockpit. But as they say, every little helps and 3 to 4 FPS could be the difference between a flyable and unflyable sim. Now an external view. We do need to bear in mind that the density of both the terrain and the clouds will have an impact on the performance. But these results are purely indicative rather than set in stone. Currently getting about 39 FPS. Let's switch it down to balanced and see if we get any improvement. There's been a definite pickup there from about 39 to about 47 FPS for me. Let's experiment further and we're going to change it from balance to performance. 
leaving the GPU on my RTX 3090. And in this case, for the 3090, it's made a, a nominal difference of maybe 1 or 2 FPS in the cockpit view. The level of performance improvement to be expected will depend very much obviously on your graphics card. Low to mid-range graphic cards, up to circa 2080 Super, should experience the biggest benefit from these changes. The reality is the RTX 3090 can accommodate the Phoenix A320 with very little problem. But nonetheless I've seen changes between 3 FPS and maybe 9 or 10 FPS. So the point really that I'm making is it's worth experimenting. Different systems and different graphic cards will yield different results. But if you're struggling for performance, you're getting some juddering or some micro pauses then choosing one of these settings may well help you. You will, however, have to experiment yourself to find what suits your system best. For me, I finally settled on the RTX 3090 for the render display, not the CPU, and for display quality, I went for balanced. This would give me 50 to 60 FPS flying high at altitudes, and landing at Gatwick, well, FPS could drop as low as 30 to 35. Here's a quick look at the settings that I use when flying an airliner. Resolution is obviously at 100%. Pre-caching and volumetric clouds are at ultra. And more or less everything else is either high or medium. The refresh rate for the glass cockpit obviously set to high for airliners. And these tests were done on my system which is a fairly beefy PC with the i9 10900K. Select your search icon from the taskbar and type in game mode to bring you to the screen here. Make sure game mode is off. This is applicable to both 2D and VR aviators. On the right hand side you've got related settings, graphic settings. Select that and here is your HAG setting. HAGS meaning hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that is off as well. This will help with frame rates and reduce the frequency of stutters. For those with NVIDIA graphics cards, open up the NVIDIA control panel. From the left hand menu, select Manage 3D Settings, then select the second tab, Program Settings. This will list programs installed on your PC, select Microsoft Flight Simulator, and now we can individually control and manage some of the graphic settings. Scroll down, we're looking for Power Management Mode. Default is Normal. Change that to prefer maximum performance. Scroll down again. We're looking for texture filtering quality. Normal is quality. Change that to high performance. And we're done. Staying with NVIDIA, here's a hidden frame killer. If you use GeForce Experience, hit Alt-Z on your keyboard and make sure Instant Replay is off. If it's on, it automatically records the last 5 or 10 minutes. Ignore the box next to it says recording, it's simply because while I am recording, instant replay must be off. This will improve your sim overall. It's best to keep this turned off, and you can do this by hitting the settings, the cog, on the right hand side. Well, I hope these settings and tips have been of some help. If you've been struggling with performance for the Phoenix Airbus A320, please remember that results will vary depending on your system, graphics card, CPU and memory. None of these by themselves are a miracle cure, but the combination will hopefully it will help significantly. If it did, great, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. Stay well, look after yourself, see you again soon. And bye for now.